do a count for us. Okay. Cool. So we're just waiting for people to come on. And... Yeah, if they want to. Okay. Yeah. So right now we are live on the Great Everyday Podcast. Yep. So and, they can, um, I don't know if they can hear us or not. Okay. They should be. Yeah. And if you're able to check this out and you're hearing this, we definitely welcome you joining us. We're just going to take the next uh, four minutes just to uh, just catch up a little bit mm-hmm. before we kind of get into everything. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, if you're listening, audio only, you're hearing this. So welcome. Er- earlier earlier welcome <laughs> we're gonna work through the bugs we're gonna get this down at some point yep uh the big man here has been you know negotiating some big big things you know for our for our woodbridge family our greater family too but you know we he has been so busy we're gonna talk about that stuff in about four minutes but uh and i've been world traveling even though <laughs> i shouldn't be but that's that's not my fault but uh, yeah, we, we're gonna settle in at some point here and uh, talk about a lot of the things that's going on. Nice glasses, by the way. Thanks, thanks, man. Yeah, Tasha has me make sure I wear my glasses. She like make sure you, that's you so wear funny. your stuff, man. I was I was doing your like, serving. Yeah, you were talking. I was like, about, I gotta, gotta I was wear like, my glasses, man. I'm like, am, am, have I been ignoring my wife? Because I kind of do that for my wife, right? Like she looks at me and like, hey, how's this? How's this? And I'm right. like, yes, yes, no, 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 no. I think it's right. You know what I mean? Right. And you're telling me, I'm like, man, maybe am, am I flying enough for my wife? Like, am I like representing her well? Like, I don't know. I, I got to make sure that I'm. Hey, man, just do, do what the lady says. <laughs> <laughs> it makes, makes life so much better when you do what the lady says. So, um, but I'm fired up that we have this platform and that we're able to, to connect with people. And, um, and if you are on Facebook right now and you want to join us, we definitely welcome you joining us. Yeah. And, oh, um, put your headphones on. Andy. Oh, I need to yeah, put my headphones put your, on. Get closer to the mic. Yeah, let me get let me yeah. get set up, man. I'm getting used to this new setup. Yeah. All right, that's cool. All right, cool. Yeah. So there's a lot going on, man. It has been quite a week. Yeah. It has been a nonstop week as we're kind of running through everything related to the election cycle. Yes. Um, that was a crazy few days. It was. Crazy, what, like three days? That was... Yeah, four days, actually. Yeah, we, it went into Sunday, right? It did. It, yeah, okay. it went to Saturday, so it kind of went from Tuesday. Typically, you get the results Tuesday night. Yeah. So then it was like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That was one thing I heard from my daughter. She was like, is it usually take this long? I said, well, there's a lot of different things happening. Right. Uh, you know, more people have voted for both sides than right. ever. Right. Um, and so a lot of people you know, she was like, but you guys voted early. They should have been done. Right. I said, well, again, and this is where just a little bit of research would like go a lot, you know, cause there's so much noise. We talk about noise mm-hmm. a lot on this podcast, mm-hmm. but uh-oh, who's that? That you? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a, there's a lot. And so like a lot of people were so upset. Why is it taking so long? The fix is in, in Detroit mm-hmm. and this and that. I said, well, you know, if you take a, do a little bit of research, you will, you will figure out that like, even though people voted early, they couldn't start counting until election day right so if you know and i was in some states they were able to do some early counting mm-hmm. but, but not a lot, lot not a lot of states and no. i see that like i know the, the 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 red part of the country where they were trying to get that tr- trying to get that um reversed where they could just start counting so they right. would know but i think you know i think that was kind of struck down for you know any number of reasons right. maybe they thought that maybe think people would do things the day of or something like that but i was one of the ones who voted early i went i did to, too yeah i went up to cold tasha did yeah. no line it was nope. amazing I, i'm glad that like we were able to do that because normally i'm like hey are you going can i borrow your kids mm-hmm. to kind of hang out with my kids while staying in line for two hours because mm-hmm. that's how it was in 2016 mm-hmm. it was like the whole community was at that small little church right right next to our to the kids school and mm-hmm. it was it was a little crazy but um Big, big shout to all of the people. If you worked a poll and pause, if you worked at a polling station, mm-hmm. I don't want everybody to mm-hmm. screw it. Yeah, yeah, I know what if you meant. You worked, I knew what you meant. I know. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. If you worked at a polling station, mm-hmm. you know, words matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you volunteered your time mm-hmm. and you hung out. Thank you. God bless you. Mm-hmm. God, God bless you for for um, for doing that because you made the experience like the best experience I've ever been that I've ever had since I've been voting. So absolutely, right, we got fifteen seconds. We got left. fifteen seconds. Yeah, Here we, we go. Get, yeah, I, we got I, a few people on Facebook right now, so we're we're looking pretty good. Um, nine, eight, seven, six, yeah. five, four, three, two, one. So if you're audio only, thank you so much. Here go, we go. Go for well, it. 
Welcome to the Greater Everyday Podcast. We are so excited to have you with us. Uh, this is a space where we deal with the real issues. We are committed to deifying no one. We don't treat anybody like they're God. And uh, that is amazing. That is amazing. And, uh, we don't treat We're going to show you guys in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't treat anybody like they're God, and we don't, we don't believe in demonizing anyone. So we demonize no one, deify no one. We just deal with the real issues, um, and we seek to have real conversations about what's really going on. Uh, the great challenges of our day uh, require a greater response. And uh, literally, we are blown away by all the love that you guys have given to the Greater Everyday Podcast. My name is Will Archer, and I'm in the studio with my brother. I'm Anton Keith, guys. We're online. We're yeah. live. We're live. Thank you so much. Uh, Mike, but we're not local. We're global. We're, global. we're live and uh, we're global. Mike Henry? Yep. Um, I know Mike Henry. You do? Mike Henry is in China. Yeah, let me so, let me throw Mike Henry's comment up there. All right, so, so, so we're it. super excited. Good morning is what Mike says. Good morning from China. And so Mike, so great. You know, Mike and, and his, his lovely wife, um, you know, we, we know them from um, Philadelphia. And um, he's an incredible guy, incredible educator. And I'm um, so grateful just for everything um, that he does and is doing just to build up young people, to build up people all around the world. And so, so inspired yeah. that we are starting on this, this that new was, platform. That was mad. And we start with John Lugo, John my Lugo. man, right down the street. John, you've completed the circle. The circle is complete. It Congratulations is. It to is. you and your family. What do you mean by that? I mean, his 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 wife is has got baptized, baptized today. What? Yes. So congrats to Arlene. Congrats, Arlene. So super super excited yes. about that, and uh, so blown away just by Mike reaching out to us and showing us some love from China. That picture that you have, Mike, your avatar, that that Walmart. I wonder how that works in Walmart. Chinese Walmart. Yeah. How cheap are this? Is this, is it, are the Chinese products? Walmart must be like super cheap. Yeah. I so mean, Mike, like, you got you got to school yeah. us. You got to send us some pics. Yeah. That's, so that's he's, bad, he's taking this pick outside of Chinese Walmart. Uh, that's pretty cool. And uh, so, um, but Mike's an incredible, incredible guy. And I'm so grateful for the Henrys. And, um, and so grateful for all of you. We're so inspired. We have a growing number of you that are following the Greater Everyday podcast uh, from Dublin, Ireland. Uh, yeah. We have uh, some uh, great love that we're getting here in Virginia uh, from Namibia, uh, from Indonesia, and from all around the world. So we're just... Uh, Super blown away uh, just by what God is doing and by how you have been tapping into what we're doing here with the Greater Everyday Podcast. And so every week, uh, the numbers of you that are joining us are growing. Yeah. As always. Dublin's. Dublin's still. Killing it. They're still killing it. Killing it. So seriously. Mike, is that you from China? Or is that you from Asia? Is that all 11, 11 downloads? Is that you? No, no, no. <laughs> it's like 3%. He yeah. must be talking to some people yeah. in, 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 in Asia. So we oh, definitely. get Nepal too. So that's probably something. That's too. a part of yeah. it probably. Mm -hmm. We got some Singaporeans, mm -hmm. some Namibians, yeah. some Indonesians, some of the folks from France. Um, but uh, but as Air, Virginia. but as as always, I just want to give a lot of love to all of my brothers, all of my sisters, all my friends. Uh, in Dublin, Ireland, and definitely to all of our family here in the United States as we really tackle the great issues of our day. Um, the thing we're going to talk about today is about multiplying leaders. And I think this is a, a fitting subject for what we're dealing with and what we're facing right now. Um, you know, as of Saturday, uh, we got the word that um, we have uh, President-elect Biden yep. and uh, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Yeah, congratulations and, uh, to them. So, so very, very, very grateful for, for that um, conclusion, um, just because, you know, it's we're a country that's committed to having uh, a smooth and healthy transition. Um, uh, at the same time, I want to make it really clear, uh, we live in a congregation and in a, in a community that is very racially diverse that is very politically diverse. And in our congregation, uh, we have folks that are Republicans, folks that are Democrats, folks that are independents, folks that are libertarians. And so there's a part of our family that's happy and there's a part of our family that, that's sad and there's a part of our family that's indifferent. Yeah. And so we've got everything kind of in the mix. And so uh, I will say this, um, I'm grateful for the response of the community turning out and the numbers that they turned out. Wow. And uh, but our our focus, as always, is that as a congregation, we extend our hands to those on the right, just as we extend our hands to those on the left. And we're committed to being one community, one family, 
that's really moving things forward. Yeah, I, I think what was a little crazy about, you know, the voter turnout was that even still, we have a long way to go. Even we though we had the largest voter turnout in history, 150 million people voted, that's still only half of our population. Mm-hmm. So that's only... Less that's than half, because we're like 330 million. Right. So that, that means that like, there's still a very large uh, segment of our country who are still not being represented properly. So right. I think that, you know, going forward, I hope, you know, the leaders and things that, like we talked about tonight, they need to work harder to get the rest of those people you know, to make sure that they can vote and, can be, and feel represented, you know, in the, next, in the next four years. Absolutely. And so, so that's really where we're directing our thoughts today is mm-hmm. how do we move forward? You know, you know, I appreciate the conviction that um, Abe Lincoln expressed when he said, with malice towards none, with charity towards all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right. You know, and uh, I think it's important for us to recognize there have been a lot of hurt. There have been a lot of hurtful things that are said. Um, in the course of the political uh, um, discourse and definitely in the campaign and definitely over the past several years. Uh, now is the time to put past the, 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 the destructive rhetoric, not that that should ever have been in the equation, right. but we need to make a turn and really focus on healing and wholeness and binding up and building up our communities and building bridges. But that doesn't happen without leaders. Yeah. And it doesn't happen. I mean, it's crazy to sound to say, but it doesn't. I guess it. I, I look at the presidency as more of you know he is a leader or she is would be the leader of the free world. However, the things that we're talking about tonight, they have to start in your own home. They do. And so that that's where you know, like all the things that in terms of healing, all of these things have to start with your neighbors. Yeah. In your schools and your and in your workplaces and in and, your family, and in you your said. families like they have to like in your church family, like the healing. If we want to heal this country, we really, really got to start with great leaders. But we have to start very, very micro. Absolutely. And I think that is critical. And and that's what leads us to our scripture today. So we're going to take a look over at um, Second Timothy, chapter two. OK. And, you know, faith informs everything that we do. We're 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 believers and we're committed to the, you know, the scriptures really guiding and directing our thoughts. And in 2 Timothy 2, here's what it says. It says, And the things you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust reliable people will also be qualified to teach others. Join me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete and does not receive the victor's crown unless uh, by except by competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crop. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. You know, Paul's talking to Timothy in his second book to Timothy and uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And he says, here's, here's what I need you to do. I need you to take the things that I've told you, and I need you in, to entrust them to reliable people who will be qualified to teach others. The, the key to all leadership is multiplication. Yes. The, chi- the key to all advance of humankind is multiplication. You know, that's that in Genesis, that's what God told Adam and Eve. Be fruitful and multiply, like increase in number. So that God's intent, God's math is always that we would multiply. You know, Satan's math is that he would always seek to divide. Right. And uh, but multiplication is more powerful than division. It, that's just the nature of things. There's no equal to God's plan. And here in the Potomac Valley Church, that's really what we've been focused in on. And so, you know, Tasha and I, we've had the privilege of being here. We're now in our seventh year with the Potomac Valley Church. And uh, we're really blown away by what God's doing mm-hmm. among us and how he's moving. And I'm going to share a little bit about what we're doing here and talk a little bit about where we're going as a church. And this is kind of a precursor to what we're going to be talking about next week. Um you know, on the podcast, but also with the congregation, we're going to be rolling out an initiative called the Multiply Initiative. Uh, And the Multiply Initiative is our 10-year strategic plan of how we're going to seek to really multiply the message of Jesus in the areas where we have believers living or working. Okay. So we, we live and work within the DMV in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. 
Is a D for Dublin? The D is it should be for Dublin, <laughs> you know? and uh, and that was a horrible Irish accent. So yeah. all the all the Irish people, oh, sorry, so sorry, disappointed. Guys. So, but you got to come on, and you can correct me all yeah. you want, mm -hmm. you know. And um, but um, so it should be for Dublin, though. It really should be. <laughs> sorry, the, DC. The, no, the, uh, no. We, 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 it's all love. Yeah, we love, we love, we love. Um, so, um, but but in the in the DMV area, um, there are six million people. And we have a number of sister congregations um, that we work collaboratively and cooperatively with. Uh, but we've got members that actually live in Maryland and members that live in D.C. and members that live here in, in the Northern Virginia suburbs. So we're spread out over this area. So we've got to figure out how to be what God's calling us to be in our homes, in our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. in our communities, in the counties and the cities and the towns that we live in. And our prayer is that over this 10-year period, we would multiply the message of Jesus. We would multiply the numbers of disciples. We'd multiply the numbers of leaders. We'd multiply the numbers of small groups or family groups. And we would also multiply the numbers of campuses. Right now, we have three campuses. You know, One that's our Rappahannock campus, which serves you know, uh, King George, Spotsylvania, Fredericksburg, um, Stafford counties, and then our Prince William campus, which serves Prince William County, and also everybody that lives north of Prince William as well. Right. Um, and then our digital campus. And our prayer is that over the next 10 years, we would multiply from three campuses to having seven campuses, that we would have um, campuses that would, that would spread across the geography of where we live or where we work. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, prayerfully, we will be able to do that in partnership with other, you know, um, cooperative congregations. Uh, but however the Holy Spirit moves, we feel the urgency to take what it says in 2 Timothy 2 and put it into practice, to find reliable people who will be qualified to teach others. Yeah, so a big step is finding those people. Got to find them. Got to find them. So let's start off by talking about for the people who weren't, um, who weren't able to be on the call. Mm -hmm. um, let's just touch on... The things that were touched on during the meeting, just just in case you you weren't able to to be on the Skype call, the Skype, the uh, Zoom Zoom call, Zoom Zoom, you know, just uh, things that we got going on here mm -hmm. locally because you know, it was big time announcements going on. So if you if you wouldn't mind, yeah, just absolutely, sharing on, just sharing about what 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 went on during that call and what direction we're headed in, leading into next week, like you said, absolutely. So what we discussed first off is you know Thanksgiving is fast approaching, yeah. and so. Uh, as a congregation, we're trying to put together uh, over 150 Thanksgiving baskets, oh. um, which is which is exciting. So we're asking folks to, we're sending out a list of all the things that we need. Okay. We're asking every family that's able to either themselves or in partnership with another family to put together a Thanksgiving basket. Um, there's a lot of rural poverty mm -hmm. in King George, and we partner with an organization called Love Thy Neighbor in King George. Right. Um, there are also a number of other key organizations in Fredericksburg that have a desperate need for these Thanksgiving baskets. Uh, also, we talked about the fact that, you know, we've been able to, through a grant that we got from the Alliance, the, the Human Service Alliance of Greater Prince William, we've been able to get uh, $226,000 of funding, which we've already distributed. So in three weeks, we're able to distribute $226,000 worth of mortgage, rent, um, you know, utility payments. Um, and, and we have a, a, a number of people, well over a hundred people, uh, who are requesting more help, okay. hundred families. And so our prayer is that we can um, secure some more funding through the cares act and from the Alliance, uh, in hopes that we could help as many as, uh, you know, help people to the extent of, you know, to the tune of around a half a million dollars yeah. worth of help. So, we're praying over the next six weeks, we'll give out another, you know, $275,000. Um, so we talked about that. Um, we're going to start doing a door-to-door um, -door initiative where we um, are able to go to doors of, you know, um, in, in, in various communities. And we're going to provide some uh, personal protective gear, um, masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, wipes, uh, as well as information about how you can access these funds. Um, our right. process is very, very simple. Um, you know, it's on our website, on our mobile app. Uh, you can just go to Pova Cares um, and uh, or you can send an email 
to um, pull the cares at pvcoc.net. Okay. And um, guys, and if you have any questions about any of the things that Will is talking about, please just put them in the chat and he can see everything that's coming up. So if you put something in the chat and you want him to answer it, either he'll answer it directly or he'll, he'll point you in the right direction. And if you're listening, um, if you're listening to the audio only version of the pot, um, I will put all this information like we did last time. I'll put mm-hmm. all this information again inside the um, the notes so that you can you can access this information for either for yourself or for somebody that you know that needs some help. Absolutely. And so that was that was kind of the first end of the conversation. The second end of the conversation and really the majority of the conversation is, you know, we we've been blessed by God. I mean, just tremendously this year. Um, God blessed us to have uh, kind Victoria Lee come in and join the team to lead the Rappahannock campus. God's blessed us to be able to have a successful missions contribution, which you, the congregation just blew out. Yeah. And uh, God's just blessed our giving. And so, you know, there's just been an incredible amount of sacrifice and stewardship, um, you know, this year. Um, and we've been blown away by that. But we're also exploring uh, an opportunity to be able to, um, you know, purchase a, a building so that we can have a, a campus for our Prince William campus. Mm-hmm. So we, we talk through the details of that with the congregation, what that might look like. And, um, and we're, we're hopeful that by the end of the year, we'll be able to purchase uh, another, another building for uh, the Prince William campus. Um, and then by the summer of next year, we'll be able to launch um, the uh, Potomac Valley Christian Academy, which is a preschool, which is uh, 100% brain-based education um, high use of technology and integration with the scriptures. So you're using the word of God to teach the, the youngest minds. Mm-hmm. You're, you, you're utilizing the, the best in, in um, pedagogy in teaching and educational tools using brain-based technology. And also you're using, you know, um, an integration with technology. Every child will have their own tablet that they'll be able to access. So it, it will be a state of the art, you know, world class education um, for our kids. With the the group that's growing the most in our congregation are young families yes. with lots of little kids. Yes, and so we want to meet the needs of those kids. And we don't want them just to be here. We want them to to be their very best and to give them the best possible outcomes. And everyone can tell you that the education you get in the first five years of your life shapes so much of who you are moving forward. Yeah. And so, um, so we're really, really excited about the launch of the preschool. Um, Dr. Sheila Holis is spearheading that effort um, from her, her, her um, preschool program that she's developed with Blue Ribbon Preschool. And so she was on. She um, spoke quite a bit about that. And her son, um, Horace, spoke quite a bit about that as well. And, um, and then we just fielded a number of questions about what it would look like for us to have an um, a in-person campus here in Prince William so we're very hopeful going into 21. Mm-hmm. Um, 21 um, is uh, is really going to be a game changer, I think, for the Potomac Valley Church. And we talked about the fact that we're going to be introducing next Sunday our 10-year strategy, 2021 to 2030, um, kind of our you know 10-year strategy, which is the Multiply Initiative. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All awesome things. We're we're on the track. We're on a good track. Bro, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's I, I, my mind's blown. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. If you're if you're listening to this or you're looking, you, you know, you're watching the stream and you're thinking to yourself, "How can I help?" Mm-hmm. There is a way you can help. There's something you can do that you can help. Please connect with us on the podcast. Please email us at greateryeverydaypodcast at gmail Please send uh, the Potomac Valley uh, uh, Facebook account a DM. Um, I monitor that as well as as well as like I think three or four other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and please, if you if you want to reach out and connect and help or serve in some way, or you just have questions about any of the stuff that we just discussed, please don't wait. Please don't just sit there and think, "What can I do?" Or there's something that I need, or there's mm-hmm. a way I want to serve. Don't just think. Just act. Just do it. I mean, we, we can use you. We can use your talent. We can use, in, you know, your hands. We can use, you know, like, please just give us an opportunity to, to be able to, um, to just connect with you in some way. Or if you're just looking for a good church family yeah. and you're new to the area and somehow you stumbled across this podcast, welcome. We have several outstanding family groups in this area mm-hmm. and we will get you plugged in. So all really good stuff. Yeah. And I'll just break down a little bit kind of about us as a community. So we're really fortunate that 30% of our members 
are in leadership roles in our congregation. So we sat down, we kind of did some of the analysis. You know, we have an amazing eldership, a deaconship, um, where we have uh, two elders, two elders' wives. We have 10 deacons and 10 deaconesses. Um, so a deaconship of 20, um, an eldership with four. Um, we have uh, amazing ministry staff. This is our full-time ministry staff of eight. And, um, and then we have 43 uh, family group leaders and, um, and, and key ministry leaders. And so we're just so blown away that we're able to see, you know, 30% of the congregation is in a leadership role. Uh, but the truth is we need to take that. And honestly, in 2021, we need to double that. So we need to go from 75 to 150. Okay. Um, right now we have 20 family groups. Um, we're going to need to double that. So we're going to need to move uh, very quickly to 30 family groups and then to 40 family groups, um, you know, over the next two year period, not over a year period, but we need to double that in two years. Uh, what's causing the explosive growth is, you know, we, you and I, we live in Prince William, which mm -hmm. is the second largest jurisdiction in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Everything around us is growing like crazy. So yeah. Fredericksburg is growing, King George is growing, Stafford's growing, Prince William's growing. Um, and then going up 95, it's just, there's incredible kind of population growth that's happening. Uh, but also our digital campus is growing. I mean, our digital campus has grown tenfold yeah. in the past six months. And so you not only breaking milestones like bro, every week, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's crazy. And uh, so one of the things we're going to be doing in 21 is Marcus and Lexi are working on this. We're going to be moving to digital campuses. I mean, not just digital campuses, digital small groups. So oh, if, if you're in China or mm -hmm. if you're in Dublin, Ireland, or if you're in, you know, you know, name the city United States, mm -hmm. uh, you can get plugged into the Potomac Valley Church in a digital small group with a small group leader, with a discussion group. We can study the Bible with you digitally, and um, and obviously you can't get baptized digitally. That you have to do in physical water. Mm -hmm. um, but we're we're really setting up the framework that wherever you are anywhere in the world, you can tap into what we're doing here. Now, our prayer is that you'd get plugged into an in-person community, yes. and we want to get you plugged in with one of our sister communities, one of our sister congregations. Um, but we're really setting up the framework to spread the gospel to anyone, anywhere, at any time. You know, today was a great e evidence of that. Um, you know, I got to wake up this morning. The Holy Spirit woke me up around 4.30, 5 o'clock this morning, and I went out to go pray. And while I was praying, you know, I just went, you know, I, I, I took some time. I was just kind of looking at my phone. And, um, and God opened up a door this week for me to preach for our sister congregation in Jakarta. You know, Jakarta is, you know, 12, 12 hours ahead. Mm -hmm. So I was getting a series of messages from people that had already heard the sermon. And oh. they, they were talking to me in their afternoon, in my morning, <laughs> you know, and they were like, man, you know, and I, I just going a whole lot more than what you normal. <laughs> I was, so I'm sitting there watching this clips of the sermon mm -hmm. with Bahasa Indonesian subtitles. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, my goodness, like I'm starting a day. They're ending a day. And I'm so grateful that I get to be a part of a fellowship where while I'm asleep, God is allowing us to help spread the gospel. Yeah, that's using and technology which in, is, in the best way. Bro, it's just amazing. And now here we are, you know, we're into Sunday night and they're into Sunday, into Monday morning, right. you know, so they're starting their work day as we're having this podcast. But we've got, you know, we got, we got a man, Mike, yeah. reaching out to us from China. Yeah, you it's know, morning for him too. It's morning for him, you know, yeah. so it's, it's, it's crazy that you know around the clock now we can spread the gospel yeah i mean and, and i think that's what it needs to be now we need to use everybody's talents and everybody's mm -hmm. treasures and and all of this powerful tech that we have with mm -hmm. just a little bit of research and understanding we can use this to connect with anybody in around the world and i i love that you know when i look at the at the analytics every week as i'm putting the podcast out i just like our, our reach is just growing more and more and i hope that you know, I hope that we can use, you know, the chat below to like for people to connect with each other. You might realize that like we might find that they're different people. Like I think that like it's like a group of people in Dublin, but mm -hmm. you might find out that it might be two different groups of people. It might be. And, and, you know, through the power of technology, you guys might be able to connect. Yeah. And and, and as as we 
progress and, and get digital campuses, you guys might find a way to be able to connect with each other. So, hey, man, it's, it's amazing. It is totally amazing. But it is what Paul um, was talking about through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He said, you know, I'm able to teach you, Timothy, one-to-one, right? Now, Timothy, I need you to find reliable people. He didn't say a reliable person. He didn't say one-to-one-to-one. He says, I need you to be a multiplier, a force multiplier. And that's the call of discipleship, is the call is for us to be force multipliers, for us to uh, change the world by bringing the message of Jesus into the world. And if you wouldn't mind just pulling up Matthew 28. So, you know, the, the end of... You know, th- th- there's a lot of conversations about means and ends. So the the end would be, you know, um, discipleship. But the means is also discipleship. It's an interesting um, plan that Jesus lays out here. And he, he, he sums it up in Matthew 20. We're going to look at verse 18. And many of us are familiar with this, but I, I want to encourage you to reimagine what the scripture is saying or just listen to it, if you will as if you were hearing it for the first time. It says, Jesus came to them and said, now before he says what we're, he, what we're about to read, I want you to figure and remember, he's been with them for three years. Mm-hmm. He got murdered on the cross. He's raised from the dead. In his resurrected form, he spent 40 days with them before he says this. And so this is 43 days after he died. This is 40 days since he's been resurrected. And then he says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. At this point, Jesus could tell them to do anything. He could say, you know what? All authority has been given to me. Go, Peter, and take Caesar's role. Go, John, and take Pilate's role. You know, he could do anything. Mm -hmm. But instead, he says, with all the authority in heaven and earth, the thing I want you to do is to go and make disciples. And not just to make disciples, but to make disciples of all nations. The word there is ethne, all people groups. Because the idea of nation or nation states had not been developed when Jesus said this. So he was saying of all people groups, every people group. We understand now people groups are organized into nations. Mm -hmm. He says, and then I want you to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus' intent is that these disciples would find reliable people who they could share the message of Jesus with, make them disciples, baptize them, develop them so that they would replicate. And that is what is so transformative about the gospel message It's not that you have participants. It's not that you have congregants. It's not that you have parishioners. It's not that you have church attendees. It's that you have disciples. Yeah. And you have, they have to be able to obey and multiply because if not, they're just everything that you just said. And that's the thing, honestly, Anton, that fires me up as I'm sitting across the table from you having this conversation is I remember being here in your house and studying the Bible. Mm -hmm. I remember being in Brandon's house across the street and studying the Bible, right? And you becoming a disciple and your wife becoming a disciple. But today, not only have you helped your friend John to become a disciple, but he's able to baptize his wife, Arlene. And so you and Soma are disciples who are multiplying disciples. Yeah. This and John and Arlene will be disciples who multiply disciples. Yeah. John is already a disciple who's multiplied a disciple. Yeah. But See, I think we're most. I think we, we're we're going to have to talk. We can talk about it in a the next podcast. But I think that's where, um, I think sharing your faith, mm-hmm. especially these days. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't even you can't talk about who you would vote for. You can't talk about um a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. You know, like and and then back in the day, it was really kind of. You're not really supposed to talk about these sort of things, right? Mm-hmm. Even though the Bible's very old and it was, you know, for a long time, it's been very, like we've understood what it said. And mm-hmm. it, 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 the translation hasn't <laughs> moved from go forth to all nations and make it disciples. Hasn't. Right? It hasn't changed. But for some reason, maybe culturally, right, we've gotten to a place where it's not polite or PC to go around sharing your faith. And I think people are like, well, 
it was good for somebody to come to me and share their faith, but me sharing my faith with someone. Mm. And a big part of it too is, you know, we, we have this idea that we need to have professional ministers share the gospel with people Mm. and, you know, and we want to do it in a sanitized way in a place where that's the time we do it. Sunday morning from 10 to 11, Mm -hmm. the professional person can speak then. Mm -hmm. But that's not what Jesus t- told them to do. Yeah, and it's like if they don't convince me, then man, you know, never mind. I'll just hey, hang that, out. You, I give you one hour at 168. <laughs> you know, good luck with you with that. You know, and the truth is, 168 hours in the week, 24 hours in the day, seven days in the week. You're a disciple. I'm a disciple, and yeah. we're called to make disciples. And honestly, there is no change until we make the turn to embrace that. Mm -hmm. We got to go back to original form. And this is the form. The form is multiplication. And that that's the call of the hour. Let me see. John says he's up. up. He says, I'm up for the challenge. And John, we're with you. We know you are, bro. Yeah. yeah. We we know you. And that's, that's how we're going to change this neighborhood. Right? Yes. I mean, and, um, take care, k- taking care of your, your family mm-hmm. and then expanding to your neighbors around you and then squaring away the whole community and then, you know, move into other communities. But Absolutely. like, just like you talked about in your multiple, you know, when you we talk about multiplying and the challenge that we have for 10 years, I mean, it's, it's going to be a, a very, very large undertaking. But, you know, m- my church family has shown me that we're capable of anything when we, when we really, really put our heads down and, and really go after something. Yeah. I mean... You, you talked about the missions contribution. That was blow away. <laughs> that was, that was, I mean, you know, I thought like, I mean, I don't know. I just thought like, okay, with every, there was every excuse mm-hmm. to under deliver. Absolutely. There it's was COVID. Every, yeah, it's, it's COVID. Yeah, it's, Jobs are insecure. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we can do this. And my goodness. Yeah. If the church, I mean, that was the most we've ever given. And, and I'll be real with you. We struggled, bro. Mm-hmm. We struggled. Seven years ago, we were struggling to give 40000 mm-hmm. And we gave $150,000. Yeah. yeah. And in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. And at the same time, our weekly giving didn't go down. It just kept going up. And and that's all praise to God. And, yeah. and much thanks to all the sacrifice. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things we talked about, though, here's a super convicting fact. When we we got into the numbers, and just you know, I don't know what anybody in our church gives. Mm-hmm. Like I I don't touch the money. I don't look at what anyone gives. We have a fantastic administrator that handles all that, but she gives us macro data, you know. And she'll, she so I said, you know, give me the raw kind of macro data, nothing specific to any person. What we realized is only thirty four percent of the congregation does about ninety percent of the giving. So. We're blowing it away, mm-hmm. but that's only with a third of us. Right. I mean, we, what talk happens, about, we talked about voting and like, like I know this is the first time close to half yes. actually voted, but what yes. happens when everybody does it? Right. Yeah. And that is where we're at. And so our goal, you know, this next year is to really turn the corners of church to move towards a hundred percent of the disciples making disciples. And our goal in the next 10 years is that a hundred percent of us would be making disciples and that would result in multiplied disciples, multiplied small groups, multiplied leaders, multiplied campuses, um, and the multiplication of the message of Jesus. Yeah, that was the vision, mm-hmm. and that is the vision, and that's where we're going. All right, so let's let's uh, let's wrap up by talking about talking about leaders. A yes. Bit. Yeah. Um, our topic was how we're gonna. We've been talking about leaders so much. Which which, which today? T- today's topic. Yeah. Is multiplied leader, leaders. Okay. Leaders. Leaders. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, so I would love to know in the coming week mm-hmm. um, from from everybody listening to this, mm-hmm. I would love to know your suggestions um, mm-hmm. because we need we need ideas. You know, you might you, you might not think that you have anything to give, but I I promise you, you do. I promise you, we right. need your voice. We do. Even if even if that voice is translated to an email mm-hmm. or a written letter or a text or a direct message. We need to hear your voice because, you know, us just having small meetings and being an echo chamber for ourselves is not very productive. It's when we get ideas from everywhere and we can hear, you know, you're just like, wow, I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that. And once you once you're able to do that, 
you could take the best of the bunch and really, you know, we can form up a plan and, you know, get a plan of action going mm-hmm. and we can, we can all be marching in the same direction. Mm-hmm. So please, you know, take this time, take this week. Um, if you're listening to this on audio only, you'll be hearing this on Monday morning, spend the rest of the week, pray about it, talk to your families and think about how you can be a better leader. Absolutely. I mean, and if you, if you don't know how, then I would encourage you to listen to this entire season of the Great Everyday Podcast because that's what we've been talking about. Because we realize that nothing begins except for, for with a with a great competent leader, just like we talked about in Timothy. Absolutely, and and the truth is, leadership matters, and the the voice that you have in your family matters. Yeah, and whether you if you say nothing, you do provide leadership, the lack of it. If you say something that's destructive, you do provide leadership, you know, a negative leadership experience. If you choose to to drink from the well of the scriptures and to drink from the well of faith, you're able to provide transformative leadership. And right now in our communities, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our country, in our world, we need transformative leaders. Definitely. And transformative leaders always multiply and they multiply other leaders. It's it's funny it's one thing to gather followers, but if you truly are a transformative leader, what leaders do is leaders multiply leaders. That's what Paul did with Timothy. That's what Timothy did with the reliable people that he taught. And that changed the world. That's what Jesus did with his disciples. And that's what God's calling you to do. That's what God's calling me to do. Mm -hmm. That's what God's calling you, Anton, specifically to do in your life and in your faith. And if you, if you doubt it, think about these conversations were, were had, over 2020 years ago Mm -hmm. and the leadership that was shown then is still we're we're still benefiting from the fruits of that of of those plantings then so don't doubt leadership don't doubt that one that if you're one person thinking that you can't change anything i mean i mean i'm talking to the christians here for a second if you doubt if you doubt that you can you can't do something then why are you even studying the bible you know, there's no, there's no point. It, you know, you're studying the Bible because the plantings that were done over 2,000 years ago are still affecting our world today. They are. And if, if that can happen, what can you do? Mm-hmm. You know, if, if the Holy Spirit is in you as well. So do something with that spirit. Don't let it just sit there and, you know, and you think that somebody, well, well somebody else will step up. Mm-hmm. They will, but it could have been you. Why waste the gift that God gave you? Use that gift, however small or large or whatever you think it might be. Let God decide that. You just put yourself into a situation where, you know, God can use you. But mm-hmm. if you just stay in your home and you're and you're quiet and you're not willing to, to, to get out there, God can't use you in that way. Mm-hmm. And sometimes God will pull you out of that. Mm-hmm. And in my experience, <laughs> that's not... That's not the best way, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, when, when you make God act, you know, he's, ah, I'm a wait, for, I'm a wait for him to, you know, come on out. I believe in him. He'll come out. You know, that's the best way when you just say, all right, God, I'm listening to you. I prayed. We had a conversation. Yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow what you say. When God has to come down and pull you out, that is. Sometimes people say that's what they want, but I don't no. think that's what you want. I think you want to listen. I think no, you want to just I, listen, just yeah. pray and go and with then it. be open to, to his instruction. Because when you yeah. make him, oh, it's just, mm. Mm. but it's crazy because we have so many, everybody has that, that story. Like mm. when did God kick you? Mm. <laughs> it's like, you know, and it's, it's never, I don't want to say either it's positive or negative, but you would label it as positive. It's definitely negative. Like, oh man, what happened? Oh, well, I got fired. Well, yeah, but God works in those ways too. He don't does. make God move you. Okay. Move yourself. Let this be, um, this is God working through us to talk to you. If you're listening and you're on the fence about doing something right now in terms of leadership or, you know, maybe thinking about taking, you know, being a leader of a small group mm-hmm. or something, just go for it. Mm-hmm. We are here. We are here to help you uh, nurture that that talent into something great. So, um, I think that's where we are. Yeah. And, and honestly, next week we're going to dive a whole lot more into talking about this multiply initiative, talking more about what greater everyday leadership looks like. Yeah. But we would love to hear from you this week, mm-hmm. whether you're in Dublin, Ireland, or you're 
in Woodbridge, Virginia, yeah. or you're in Dale City, or you're in Namibia, or if you're in China, yeah. um, you know, uh, we would definitely love to hear from you. It has been real, as always, and I look forward to our continued conversation. This is the Greater Everyday Podcast, where we deal with the real issues. We deify no one. We demonize no one. We just seek to deal with the real challenges of our time by offering a greater response. And that response tonight is, let's multiply some leaders. Let's change the world. Absolutely. So, um, again, uh, we're across every single uh, format that you can think of. This podcast will be up on YouTube. It will be, it's on Amazon, Apple Music, Spotify, Mm -hmm. Stitcher, anything that you can grab a podcast from. It's there. Mm-hmm. Um, even now, it, it's it's like if you have uh, some sort of um, hearing disability, the subtitles. Facebook even puts it up. puts um, Wow. Puts subtitles up automatically now. Wow. Yeah. If you upload a video, it puts subtitles up automatically. So it's really really cool of them to do that. So we're you know I'm just trying to take advantage of all the technology like we talked about earlier to serve in the best way possible. So. Uh, we will be here next week, God willing. I don't think I'm leaving town. <laughs> totally good. my fault. But um, I don't think we're not leaving town. And we're doing this new platform. Yeah. And so we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep right, growing cool. this. This is what's so, up. So, yeah, we're going to keep doing this. So either he's going to be in Foundation Studios or he's going to comfort at his own home. Cool. That doesn't matter. We can we can, we can can set this up no matter where we cool. are. Cool. So because of the power of technology. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us. It's been 45 minutes, so that's our limit. Uh, we will see you next week. When I when I when I get us out of here, absolutely. God knows what He's doing. Let's have the courage to multiply some leaders. Hit us up. This is the Greater Everyday Podcast. Catch you on the other side. Later, guys. Peace.